Connor Maynard, how are you doing? I'm all good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well too, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, what's, what's been the highlight of your year so far? Because you've had quite a mad year, haven't you? Yeah, um, it's, been, it's been very crazy so far. I think this year, I think probably one of the highlights for me has been the incredible people that I've had a chance to work with on this, on this album. I think um, meeting people who I, you know, I've, I've looked up to kind of growing up in the, in the music industry, um, working with people such as you know, Pharrell Williams, Neo, um, um, I, I think for me, yeah, just like having that experience so early on in my in my in my career is kind of definitely a, a probably one of the highlights of this year. So. Your first album is coming out at the end of July. Yes. Uh, how do you get to work with people like Pharrell Williams on your first album? How does that happen? Well, I mean, I kind of obviously have been posting up um, covers um, to YouTube for for a long time um, before that. So you know, people are already kind of maybe had perhaps seen me on there. Um, and yeah, it just so happened that you know when he when he reached out and he asked to kind of work with me, um, he had he had previously seen my my YouTube covers and he didn't realise I was already signed. So when he reached out, it was kind of like, oh, I'd love to sign him. And then obviously um, my label were like, well, he's already signed. So it was kind of difficult. But then he kind of uh, was like, well, I still have to work with him. So I went out to Miami um, to spend a week in the studio with Pharrell. And yeah, just kind of we worked on all different songs for for the album. And there will now be two tracks um, with Pharrell on the album. So yeah. Now, in the, in the words of your song, which you did for us um, earlier, some girls are naughty, some, some girls are sweet. Yes. <laughs> which do you prefer? I think there's a time, there are different times called for different situations, I think. Sometimes girls should be sweet and sometimes girls can be naughty if they want. So no, you heard it here first. I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't like a girl that's always sweet and a girl that's always naughty, I think. There's got to be a bit of balance. contrast yeah, between them. Okay. Now, last weekend you did T4 on the Beach. Yes. Um, just about a month ago, I think you played to like 80,000 people at the Capitol. Yes. Summertime ball. I mean, these are big, big crowds we're talking yeah. about now. Do you get nervous? I think when it goes over like 20,000 people, it's just a sea of people. I think it's, it gets too much to kind of just stand there and do a head count. I think you know, yeah, when, yeah. It, when it gets to that amount. Um, yeah, it's, cr it's crazy, and for me, rather than getting nervous, I kind of think, you know, if I go out there nervous, they're going to notice, and they're going to spend the whole time kind of awkwardly watching, oh, he's so nervous, kind of thing, where I just go out there, have fun, and then they're going to have fun with me, so um, I much prefer kind of going out there and just, and just being as, and having as much fun as possible rather than worrying about anything, so. The album's coming out on July 30th. Yes, July 30th, Contrast. Called, called Contrast. Yeah. I was going to ask you about the title. Is, is there any significance to that? Yeah, um, there's quite a few meanings um, behind it. Um, one being, obviously, it's a kind of a play on my first name, Connor Contrast. <laughs> but, um, other than that, uh, you know, I feel it's a, uh, it's a contrast from what people might be expecting from the album. I think maybe if people are expecting kind of a young, poppy album, it has got quite, quite deep tracks in there, maybe things that might seem a bit kind of mature, and, and that's kind of the music that... That I kind of I like, and that's why I recorded a lot of the songs that are on on the album. Um, it was also a contrast on what's already out there. I think there aren't many um, albums that sound like that out at the moment. There aren't many artists doing um, those kind of tracks, and also I thought that there's a contrast within the album. You know, they're kind of big, upbeat dance tracks all the way down to kind of slow, um, stripped back ballads. So yeah, I think that's the main reasons why. You really thought this through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's quite a few reasons to why it fits. Talking about people that you admire and like, I, I personally hear a lot of Michael Jackson in your voice, or the, okay. infl the influence anyway. Um, is, is, is that fair? Is that well, I always kind of say when I get asked, oh, who would you like to be compared to? Like Michael yeah. Jackson is kind of like the, the pinnacle for me. I think Michael Jackson is one of my favourite artists of all time, so you know, to be compared to him is definitely a good thing. So, yeah. Absolutely, and, and who? I mean, who else? You know, when you were doing covers on YouTube and stuff, who, who would you tend to kind of gravitate towards to cover? Oh, um, I kind of just did random ones that I liked. I mean, one artist that I did cover quite a lot was uh, Drake. I was a massive Drake fan when I was doing all my covers, and um, yeah, I kind of always because his songs were kind of so different to the way I, he would sing it in such a different way to me. So I thought when I did cover it, it would be there, I'd make it my own quite easily because it was just I had to sing it in my way and it would be quite different. So. Um, so yeah, I, I've really enjoyed covering his songs, and I think the writing behind the songs makes it really easy to kind of mean it when you're singing it and stuff, so. Um, 
just, just finally, you mentioned obviously there, you know, you, you really got your start on YouTube doing covers and stuff like that. For that reason, I think perhaps more than what you sound like, some people have brought out Justin Bieber as a, yeah. as a comparison. How, how do you feel about that? You know, I think for me, it's, it's just comparisons in general, like wh whoever it's to, I feel like it comes when you're early in your career. I think people are trying to guess what you're trying to be, like what your sound's, what your sound's going to be. And I think for me, I'd much rather people just, you know, listen to the album, listen to the music and, and make their own opinions. I think rather than being told what it sounds like, I think if they kind of are allowed to make their own opinions, it kind of, it, it, it's a better way of doing it. And um, yeah, for me, I'm just kind of waiting for that moment where, you know, you get to a point where you're established and, and that all that, and then there's no point in comparing you anymore because you're your own artist. So... For me, I think um, I'm just waiting for that. But you know, at the same time, he's one of the, the biggest artists in the world right now, and to emulate his success would not be a uh, bad thing. So. Okay. So when new artists start getting compared to Conor Maynard, then you, then you know. Yeah, then I'll, I'll, know, I'll, be, I'll know how they feel. I'll be there, but it's all right, mate. But you're not me. You're not me. You'll never be me. No, no, I wasn't that, but yeah. Like that, yeah. You'll never be me. Yeah. There's no arrogance there. All right, well, <laughs> Conor Maynard, thank you very much for your time, and, uh, and good luck with everything. Thank, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. In that love, I'm in that love.